Hi everyone. Having a great website is something awesome, but being able to test it continuously and optimize it to the best conversion rates that you can get is what we will do in what is called Google Optimize. It's a great tool by Google. Best thing about it, it's free. So you will be able to install it in no time. And this is what we will do in today's episode. It'll allow us to do things like A-B tests, multivariant tests, and redirect tests. If I got your attention, hang on, because we will do the installation in today's episode. So see you after this. Welcome back. The easy way to find about Google Optimize is to search in Google and then you will land on this page, which actually has Google Analytics solutions and underneath it, we have Optimize as one of the services. So in case you don't have Google Analytics, I encourage you to do that right away. Set up your Google Analytics first on your website. And if you don't know how to do that, I have a special video. The link will be placed below. Let's get started with Google Optimize for those of you who want to get started. I'm going to click on sign up for free and I'm already logged in to my Gmail account so it recognizes me and the first thing you need to do is get started. It's asking me if I want to uh, get tips and recommendations. Um, not interested at the moment or any market research. I'm hitting next and acknowledge that I have read and, um, and agreed to the terms and conditions of Google Optimize. Obviously, they're asking me if I want to uh, be part of uh, improving some of the Google products, benchmarking, and also getting more in-depth analysis. Um, I'm going to opt into that because it will definitely help me in the future. So I'm going to say done. And here we are. Uh, don't get overwhelmed with uh, this dashboard. It's actually pretty simple once you get to know and understand the, uh, the keywords and the language around uh, optimization in general. The first thing that you need to do is understand the, uh, the notion of accounts and containers in Google Optimize. So basically, uh, every uh, account has multiple containers underneath it. And an account is equivalent to a company. So if you have a company, ABC, then you would um, set up your uh, account under ABC uh, Incorporated, for example, and then your containers would be your different domains. Um, supposing that you have multiple websites, so each of these websites will be uh, inside a different container. So as you can tell here, I have my first account ID and container ID set up for me. So let's go ahead and edit container details. So uh, my container would be the name of my website that is under, uh, uh, under testing for today. It's going to be new soon. Okay, let's see what happens next. That's all it asks me is the container name. Okay. I'm expected to find out where to manage my accounts. So it's saying to manage your accounts, click on the optimized logo. And uh, I can see the optimized logo right here. Perfect. So it's telling me my container name is new soon. And it's not linked to any Google Analytics property yet. And this is how we can set it up. I can actually go back to the previous page and link to Google Analytics. That is the step that we need at the moment. So link property. And I have multiple, uh, I have multiple properties in this account. I have, uh, of course, a property here that is I'm interested in the new soon. So I'm linking that and say link. All right, now we get to the meat of this video. How do we install Google Optimize 
on our website. And the answer to this depends on how did you install Google Analytics in the first place. Let's break it down. There are three ways of installing Google Analytics. The traditional way called analytics.js, and I believe maybe 75 to 80% of people use this method. The second way is to use the newly modified G tag, which is the global tag by Google Analytics. And this was introduced late in 2017, early 2018. It's a newer implementation of Google Analytics. So this is the second method. The third method is a more professional way, and that is through Google Tag Manager. So depending on how you implemented Google Analytics, we will get into implementing Google Optimize. Let's start with the basic one, which is Google Analytics.js code. And if you go here into the part four that says install optimized plugin, this is the default one that Google has instructed us to use. And basically, this is how it looks like. All we have to do is uh, add this command to our regular analytics.js code. So the, look the, the code generally looks like this. All we have to do is add this piece of require. And as you can see here, there is this ID that says GTM. This GTM does not mean Google Tag Manager. It actually means the Optimize Container ID. They should have named it differently, but um, let's get to this part. So if I go to my website, and my website is implemented using WordPress, so I go to Appearance, Editor, and open up my header.php file, which would include the code on all the pages. And if I go all the way up here, as you can see, I have my analytics.js code. Obviously, I have commented it out for this recording purpose. So really, all I have to do is uh, put a space here, go back to my Google Optimize installation uh, instructions, copy this piece of code, get back here and paste it. There you go. And I can update my file and I am almost ready to, uh, to get done with this. However, there is a piece of code that is very essential when it comes to Google Optimize, and that piece of code is called the hiding snippet. What it actually does is to ensure that when you're running experiments through Google Optimize, that your page does not flicker. And that would happen naturally because the way uh, A-B tests run is that um, a part of your page would be hidden or changed accordingly. And if Google Optimize code is not run fast enough, uh, the user would actually see some kind of flickering on the page, hiding and showing of certain uh, elements of your site. So make sure that you add that uh, piece of code and you have to add it all the way at the top of your um, of your page. If we go back here to our uh, Google Optimize installation code and click on Next, as you can see here, it's instructing me to copy that piece of code, copy and paste it all the way just before you update the analytics code. So make sure that it goes in this uh, particular order. Let's go back. So basically our hiding snippet would be as high up in our code as we can put it and then followed by our analytics.js, which actually includes the uh, Optimize plugin. So there it is. This is method two, we're done. If you have already implemented your website through analytics.js, then you're ready to go. Just save your code and uh, of course use the, uh, the Tag Assistant uh, plugin by uh, Chrome, by Google, and that way you can actually see if the Optimize uh, plugin is installed properly. So I'm updating this file. Now, the second method is the newer way of installing analytics, which is using the G tag or the global site tag by Google Analytics. You can get to it, obviously, if you are in your analytics dashboard. This is the Google Analytics dashboard. And you get here into the property, click on tracking info, and then click on tracking code. 
you can see that this is the newer way of uh, setting up your Google Analytics code into your site. And this is pretty much the only way that Google is pushing out to its clients. So you can't really go back and install Google Analytics. Well, you can if you are able to find the code, but for now, they are pushing this more aggressively. So um, assuming that this is your implementation, you're following the newer way, um, let's cancel this one. Let's go back to our um, to our header.php. Now, obviously, if you are running uh, the newer way, you would be pasting the code right here, and you need to comment out the uh, method one, which we just talked about. Of course, it's only one or the other. You can't have everything running. So our method two would look something like this, the new gtag code by Google. As you can tell here, there is a section which is a configuration element for the gtag, and it passes in the Google Analytics uh, tracking ID. So all you need to do is add a comma here and add your optimized code. You can get this code by going to this particular page um, which uh, in which Google Analytics and Google Optimize explain to us how to install it. So you need to add a comma, copy the rest of this page here, uh, the rest of this element. Now go back and paste it like this. And make sure you replace the Optimize container ID that we talked about with the one that you have, which looks something like this. It's your GTM code. So again, GTM stands for a container ID, uh, not for the Google Tag Manager. So once you're done with this, make sure you uncomment these elements here so that your script would run and update your file. Again, make sure that all the way at the top you still have your hiding snippet because that is always required no matter what your implementation for Google Optimize is. That's it, that's the second method. Now the last method would be if you have installed Google Analytics through Google Tag Manager. And this is really the method that you should be using um, I would say if you're if you're adding your tags in general to anything, whether it's a Facebook pixel or if it's a hot jar installation or whatever uh, tags you're trying to fire, I personally recommend uh, managing all this through Google Tag Manager and it's a free tool. Again, if you don't know about it, there is a whole course that I have for free for you on my channel. Make sure you look it up. I'll also put a link in this video to get to it directly. And um, so if you're doing that, if you are actually installing using Google Tag Manager, then the script needs to still run through analytics.js, which is kind of weird. So what happens is um, Google Tag Manager will ensure that uh, analytics is firing the page view uh, at least once, which it, not at least, but actually exactly once. But we also need to put the analytics.js code all the way at the top, the way we did with method one, and make sure that we instruct it not to fire a page view because we don't want our Google Tag Manager to fire a page view for analytics and at the same time the native analytics.js to fire another page view. That would double our page views. So we will make sure by doing that. So let's get back. Just uh, making sure that I, again, comment out my method to the G tag. And as you can see here at the bottom of this page here, just as the body of the page starts, that's where my Google Tag Manager script is. Again, this is a pure Google Tag Manager uh, installation. Um, you would have this anyway if you are uh, using Google Tag Manager, so you don't need to update that part at all. All you need to do is go back here into your analytics.js. Make sure that you actually copy and paste your analytics.js and paste it all the way at the top. So we're uncommenting this and this is where it's going to be different. We have to make sure that this section here 
is taken care of by removing it completely. I'm going to delete it because this GA command, which says send page view, is the native way of sending a page view uh, to Google Analytics. So we're going to delete that. Make sure that we have the require for the optimize installation or container ID. And also we are creating here the uh, the native way of setting up the Google Analytics script on our page. So you might think that this is doing the double, uh, double the work, but I'm hoping behind the scenes that Google is actually installing it only once. Well, of course they are. Google is smart enough to do that for us, but make sure that you have your analytics script uh, implemented and set up all the way at the top of the page. So the way it works is, again, you have your hiding snippet, then you have your analytics script with the uh, part that is instructing a page view removed. And then if you scroll down here, you have your Google Tag Manager script. So this is the third method. If you're fine at this stage and you understood the three methods, then you're pretty much set. You can actually stop the video. But for those of you who are a little bit curious and they want to know whether there is a fourth method, a method that would actually use the Google Tag Manager the way we are doing just now. However, instead of, uh, of using the Analytics JS, what if we want to use the newer one, the uh, global uh, GTag uh, for the Analytics code? Can we actually do that? Well, the quick answer is no, not yet. At the time of the recording, I have actually uh, researched a little bit and I actually tried to do the same thing that we did with the analytics code by trying to hide a page view from that script and linking the optimize ID uh, to the uh, uh, GTag uh, installation. But that actually didn't work. Apparently, Google has not uh, set it up yet. So you are not able to actually uh, set up your Google Tag Manager and GTag at the same time uh, with uh, the exclusion of page views in the GTag. So as of yet, you can't do it. If you, in the future, in the near future, if you research and you found out that this works, please leave me a comment and I will make sure that I update my video or at least put a, uh, put a note out there on the video. It should be somewhere here to say, hello, this thing has changed and you can do a fourth method now. I hope that comes in soon. So that's it. Um, I hope this video was not too complex for you. I tried to break it down and make it really simple. The idea is, again, we're setting up Google Optimize, a great tool that will help your business do A-B testing, multivariate testing, and also redirect tests. And we will get into these uh, ways of uh, converting your page and improving the conversion and making sure that your tests run smoothly in next videos. So if you like this, make sure that you tell it to your friends about this video, share it, like it, and also subscribe to my channel. Until a new video with me, Danny, take care.